Dr. Christopher West, The Theology of the Body Guy. We continue our series on the week of the bridegroom, reflecting on the passion, death, and resurrection of Christ like you have never heard before. If you want to check out the previous videos in this series, check out the playlist here. And if you want to have the notes that I'm using, check out the PDF file in the link below. Why does the Byzantine Church call Holy Week the week of the Bridegroom? Christ himself says that Holy Week is the time when the Bridegroom is taken away. Dr. Brant Petrie, in his book, Jesus the Bridegroom, says this, When Jesus speaks of the departure of the Bridegroom, he's referring to one particular part of the seven-day wedding celebration that was customary in Jewish culture, the night of consummation. On the night of consummation, the bridegroom would leave his friends and family and enter into the bridal chamber in order to be united with his bride, not to emerge again until the morning. All of this has profound significance if we are to enter into the mystery of Holy Week. What is the mystery of Holy Week? Why is it the week of the bridegroom? Because it's the week, it's the time, and Good Friday is the day when Christ consummates his marriage. In other videos on this channel, I'm sure you've seen me talk about the Unity Cross, otherwise known as the Nuptial Crucifix. Here, this artist is making explicit what is implicit in every crucifix. What is it? What happens at the cross? What happened on Good Friday is the bridegroom gives up his body for his bride. Bishop Fulton Sheen puts it like this. Do you know what's happening at the foot of the cross? Nuptials, I tell you, nuptials. Christ the bridegroom mounts the marriage bed of the cross to give up his body for his bride, not in pleasure, but in pain, he says. And who is at the foot of the cross and what does he call her? Notice he doesn't call her Mary. Notice he doesn't call her his mother. He calls her woman and he calls her the mother. That's the proper biblical translation. When it says Jesus beheld his mother, proper biblical translation is Jesus beheld the mother because she is about to become the mother of all beloved disciples. Jesus says to her, woman, behold your son, pointing to the beloved disciple John. This is the most fertile union in all of human history. This is the super abundant mystical fulfillment of the union of Adam and Eve that goes back to the Garden of Eden. He's the new Adam. She's the new Eve. It's a spiritual union, a mystical union. Of course, as the Baltimore Catechism says, in the flesh, she's his mother. But in the spirit, she's his bride. She's the symbol of the church. And this artist has her receiving the flow of blood and water into the chalice. We've been talking about flowers in this series of videos and what they have to do with Holy Week, how Jesus was covered in the fragrance of flowers, nard, during Holy Week. Again, check out the previous videos here if you haven't seen them. The woman holding a chalice. What's going on? Do you know where we get the word chalice? It comes from the word calyx. What is a calyx? It's the cup of the flower that opens the petals in order that the heavenly dewfall can enter onto those petals. Check out this image right here of dewfall coming into flowers right there. The heavenly dewfall, the spiritual dewfall, the Holy Spirit enters into the chalice to transform what is in that chalice into the blood of Christ, the life giving power of the new Adam poured out for the world. Mary is the mystical rose, and she is the open flower of the chalice, if you will. 
symbolized by the chalice on the altar. Have you ever noticed a chalice looks like a flower? Calyx, flower, the open flower receiving the flow of blood and water. This is how the mystical consummation of the mystical marriage is symbolized in Christian art. Utterly, utterly, utterly astounding what is happening in this mystery. Let's keep going here. What's happening through the mystery of the cross is we are given access to the holy of holies in the temple, the place of the union of humanity with God. Check this out. This is from Hebrews chapter 9. When Christ came as high priest, he passed through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not belonging to this creation, and entered once and for all into the heavenly sanctuary. Well, what the heck does that mean? All right. The sanctuary of the temple, the inner sanctuary, the holy of holies, this is where the high priest alone could enter to offer the sacrifice that would bring about the union of God with humanity. This is modeled, the Holy of Holies is modeled in the Jewish custom after the bridal chamber where the marriage is consummated. I quote again here from Dr. Brant Petrie in his book, Jesus the Bridegroom. The Jewish bridal chamber was both designed and decorated to resemble the Holy of Holies the most intimate dwelling of the divine, which only the high priest could enter. But now we all have access to this inner sanctuary. As it says in Hebrews, we now have confidence of entrance into the sanctuary, the Holy of Holies, the place of consummation, by a new and living way that Christ opened for us through the veil, which is his flesh. In the liturgy, Pope Benedict XVI wrote, the curtain between heaven and earth is torn open, right? Remember when Christ died, what does he say? On the cross, he says, it is consummated, consummatum est. And at the moment the marriage is consummated, the veil in the temple is torn in two. We now have entrance into the Holy of Holies to be one with God. And we read that a lance was thrust into his side and out came a flow of blood and water. And John says, an eyewitness, he himself, gives this testimony and he gives it so that you might also believe. Well, that doesn't mean too much to us today, but to the Jews, they understood exactly what John was getting at. All the sacrifices of the animals that were made in the temple, the blood was washed out with a flood of water. And this blood and water flowed through a series of drains in the temple and came out of one of the walls of the temple, right out of the side of the temple. What is John saying? All sacrifices are fulfilled in the sacrifice of Christ. The temple veil is torn in two, and we all now have access to the bridal chamber where the marriage between heaven and earth is consummated. This, my brothers and sisters, is what we celebrate in every liturgy. We represent the mystery of Good Friday, the consummation of the marriage of Christ and the church. As the Catechism says, the entire Christian life bears the mark of the spousal love of Christ and the church. That's Catechism 1617. And John Paul II says in his letter on the dignity and vocation of women, the Eucharist is the sacrament of the bridegroom and of the bride. One of my favorite quotes from Pope Benedict XVI is this, summing up all I've wanted to share with you in this video. Eros, he says, the love of the bridegroom for the bride, and the bride for the bridegroom, of course. But Eros, he says, is part of God's very heart. The Almighty awaits the yes of his creatures, 
as a young bridegroom awaits the yes of his bride. On the cross, Pope Benedict says, God's eros is made manifest for us. Eros is indeed that force which does not allow the lover to remain in himself, but moves him to become one with his beloved. Is there any more mad eros, Pope Benedict XVI asks, than that which led the Son of God to make himself one with us, even to the point of suffering as his own the consequences of our offenses? Lord, I pray that you would open our eyes to the mad eros that you revealed on Good Friday and that we would have the courage as a bride to open, to receive your gift, the very gift of your body and blood, that we would have the courage to enter through the veil into the Holy of Holies where the marriage between heaven and earth is consummated forever. My brothers and sisters, I have so much more to share with you about these great mysteries. And I do so in the books I've written and in the courses I teach for the Theology of the Body Institute. Check the links below to learn more. And if you want to be part of a global community of men and women who get exclusive content that goes even deeper than the videos here on this channel, consider becoming part of our patron community. You can check the link below. Until next time.